Yo, what up peeps, welcome to a new review video. Finally the wait is over and Mortal Kombat is here. I have been following the updates on this one since I first saw its development news in 2019. When I read that James Wan was in the production wheel of this, I knew right then that this was going to be a pure fan service. Cause James Wan has always been impeccable in his work and has a spectacular track record of movies that he put his hands on and turned into gold, in my opinion. From his directorial debut of Saw and other franchises such as Insidious, Dead Silence and The Conjuring in the horror genre, to directing Fast and Furious 7 and Aquaman. He knows what he's doing in comic to movie adaptations and always sticks to the source delivering the desired outcome. So without further ado, here is my review for Mortal Kombat and a warning of course for major spoilers ahead. The opening scene was spectacular. The first 7 minutes was released to the public the day before the official release and it gave us a glimpse of how the story started and the brutality aspect of the fights. Before I was even halfway through the movie, the adrenaline was pumping. The fights, the choreography, the costumes and resemblance to the source, the VFX and the background music. Top quality. Starting off with our favorite characters first. I am Sub Zero. Joe Taslim is Sub Zero. He was relentless, menacing, powerful, and raw. The best version ever made, and the real sub we've always wanted. Now, if you are a martial arts movie fan, you would definitely be familiar with this actor's work as he starred in amazing action flicks where he played alongside Iko Ways in The Raid Redemption and Netflix's The Night Comes For Us. I really wished if they had cast Iko as well for one of the characters because he is just as outstanding in his acting and fighting skills as Joe. Jota Slim was also in Fast and Furious 6 where he kicked the shit out of Roman Pierce and Han in the Waterloo Station fight scene. He's an amazing martial artist and actor and the perfect cast for Sub-Zero because he's the coolest, pun intended. Hiroyuki Sanada also is Scorpion and his fighting scenes were just as spectacular. One thing I didn't necessarily like though was that we didn't get to see much of him in the movie because he only appeared in the first minutes as Hanzo Hasashi and then at the final fight scene as Scorpion and only showed up in a few flashes between the beginning and the end. Now Sanada also has a great record of famous and popular movies and is an awesome addition to every film he's in. I remember him in a number of popular movies like in 2013's The Wolverine, Sunshine and Avengers Endgame. Now Kano was a fucking beauty. Absolutely brilliant. Best version I ever saw. He put so much comedy flavor in the scenes and I think for a huge part of the movie, he made it better. His sarcasm and spontaneous jokes were just brilliant and this version was very unique from his predecessors. And again I would say rest in peace to Darren Shalavi and Trevor Goddard who both passed away. They were amazing in their portrayals too and I did mention about their roles in my other video alongside a few interesting stuff about MK. So be sure to check that one out. So Liu Kang's character is different this time. He is ready and prepared, unlike the old version where he was still immature, trying to unlock his inner power and was driven by vengeance for his brother's death. But almost ready physically, so he was already an experienced fighter. This time he's the one who found and led the fighters to where they're supposed to go. Liu Dilin was a great casting and I remember him from his role in the 2017 Power Rangers and also in the true story film Son of the South. Now on to Kang Lao and I have to say first of all that he had the best entrance in the whole film and his existence was just charismatic all throughout. He was no different at all from his source character in the game. From the costume to his personality, 10 out of 10 casting and he also had the best finisher of all characters. Flawless. <laughs> 
Victory. For Raiden, I really liked Tadanobu Asano's casting. I thought he was a brilliant choice for this role, although wasn't as good as Christopher Lambert, who had more personality and presence in the 1995 version. As for Shang Tsung, he was menacing and more intimidating. I'm not comparing him to Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa because he'll always be the first known and popular Shang Tsung for me and I'm sure for many fans as well. But Chin Han played the role perfectly in his own way and I want to see more of him indeed. Jax and Sonya were nicely portrayed as well and they had a good chemistry between them. There were some characters however who weren't really special or had anything to add like Nitara and Reiko and Reiko who anyone could have easily been in his place but he was just there to scream violently and get his head squashed by Jax's finisher move. Melina also didn't have much to present either even though she's a significant character in the franchise but there was no depth to her at all here just her fighting and death. As for Goro, I loved his design obviously and of course it was going to be CGI compared to the older version which was more practical but then it had its technical issues. But then Goro in this one, he wasn't presented as that prince that he was known to be very significant and he had that charisma. He was just presented as kind of a henchman who was sent to kill the main protagonist. And this is also another aspect of a major character that I didn't necessarily like how he was portrayed. Finally Cole Young being the new character who made his debut in this film was a pretty good addition. His story wasn't very special but gave a decent tone of change to the movie. And I like that they related him to Hanzo Hasashi's bloodline and eventually through the kunai given to him by Raiden he summoned Scorpion from the Netherrealm to help him in the fight against Sub-Zero. The fight scenes and the fatalities were so good in general but the main downsides of this however was that overall despite the amazing casting a lot of the characters were quite abstract and didn't really have much of a backstory except for Cole Young. The majority of them only appeared to match their counterparts in the games and to show their popular special moves but there wasn't much of an explanation to them and what they do here. Like the rivalry between Sub-Zero and Scorpion and why Bihan killed Hanzo's family and was after his bloodline. There was no explanation at all for what was that for. In other versions like the games and also in MK Legends, Scorpion's Revenge and MK Legacy, it was Quan Chi who impersonated Sub-Zero and killed Hanzo's family to ignite the rivalry between the two and get Hanzo to join the tournament and seek revenge against Sub-Zero. So maybe a little explanation in this version, however different it is, could have put a bit of drama and drive to the film. And I think for a story like this which involves too many characters from heroes and villains and each character has a significant addition to the story, it needs more than just an hour and 15 minutes to present something closest to the source. Probably about two and a half hour runtime would have been perfect to make a solid adaptation. Also some scenes were rushed in some of the fights and there were a lot of noticeable cuts and edits in random parts. I understand why some people thought that it could have been made better, although I feel similarly to some extent but I think overall it was done nicely. Of course there was no tournament since they changed it to that change. Shang Tsung was simply cheating his way by going after the chosen fighters and trying to kill them off before the tournament starts. But for me that was a good change of story and not far off the source game. There were obviously some cheesy parts as well like how the warriors had to unleash their arcana to be able to fight any of the foes. So Jax gets his own arcana and his arms grow out of him and Kano's power is laser eye that comes on when he gets really pissed off and <laughs> Well, that was a cool scene nevertheless. I like the ending as well with the teasing of Johnny Cage and it looks like there will be more sequels since the news came out that Joe Taslim signed the contract for four more sequels if the franchise succeeds. So far the reviews from the fans seem to be on par with the movie's ambition. So I'm feeling pretty positive about the possibility of future sequels. And obviously there were no major expectations for this movie because the story itself is based on a video game and is mostly looked at from an entertainment perspective. So the way I saw this movie was that it was obviously setting up the universe of Mortal Kombat. So it seems that all what we just saw was a stepping stone into something bigger, which I'm very sure will include the actual tournament and more of the characters that we we'll love to see. Overall, I think James Wan and Simon McCoy did a brilliant job and I really look forward to see more of this because after that unspoken of sequel of 1995 version, The Earth was created in six days, so too Shall it be destroyed? Too bad you will die. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, bitch. We definitely need better than that.
So judging by the movie from the start to the finish, the setting up of the story, despite being a little bit incoherent in some parts, but still had good fight scenes and it was so far the closest version to the Source game and by far even I would say probably the best adaptation of all the movie adaptations that we have seen. My verdict on this would be outstanding. I would definitely love to see more of this and for certain I want to see more of Jota Slim who will most likely come back as Noob Cybot in the next parts and see more of Sanada as Scorpion. And if this was the initial cast for these characters so far, I can only imagine how good it will be when they cast uh, the other characters like Shao Kahn, Ermac and Quan Chi and Johnny Cage of course and all the other characters that we'd love to see. So this was my review for Mortal Kombat 2021. If you have any more points or aspects you'd like to share or discuss, please drop us a comment below. And if you like this video and you want to hear more of my reviews about other movies that I would be uploading on this channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. And you may give this video a thumbs up. And until the next video, stay safe and peace out.